Hey everyone, so we've got STEM Sunday, May edition. A lot happened this month and it's gonna happen in May, so we have a lot to cover. Let's see, first things first. Um, Rubik's Cube made an appearance at Yuri's Night, which is my shirt right here, um, earlier this month. And I solved a Rubik's Cube as the CEO of my company was telling everyone why it's such a great company to work for. It was really fun to do. Um, I kind of choked a little bit and it started freaking out under pressure. So I've got to work on solving a cube under pressure. We'll, we'll practice that, but it was super fun. I hope you guys saw it. And if you didn't, you can head over to YouTube to check it out or follow at Yuri's Night and, and check it out that way. We also had something really cool happen on Mars. So I told you guys about Perseverance, everything going on there. Very exciting. Well, Perseverance brought along a little buddy named Ingenuity. Ingenuity is the helicopter um, that was deployed and officially took flight this month, and that, or last month in April. And that's so exciting because we've never had motorized flight on another planet. We've never been able to like control motorized flight. Um, and this is like Wright Brothers, the first time they flew at Kitty Hawk. You know, this is like the start of even the space age, but aviation, this is kind of like that, but Mars. So this is an exciting thing to see. It's gonna show us a lot about how to fly on other planets. And eventually when we get to Mars, we might start seeing things being delivered by helicopter and that kind of stuff using drones whenever we go out on EVA. So it'll be really exciting to see how that plays into the future of Mars. Speaking of humans on Mars, there was another thing that was brought with Perseverance called MOXIE. And this is really interesting because of in situ resource utilization, ISRU. This is a whole new field going on of how we use resources in space to create a sustainable presence in space. Let's get into that later, but let's talk about MOXIE. MOXIE is using the CO2. There's tons of CO2 on Mars and we can't breathe CO2, right? We need oxygen. So it's actually using the CO2 and converting it into oxygen for us to breathe. So it's using that resource of CO2 to give us the sustainability of oxygen. So if you want to go to Mars, you're going to want that, want that oxygen when you get there. So that's super exciting. Okay, so now let's take it back. Let's go to the moon. A lot of cool things happening um, with the moon, a lot of new programs coming up. The coolest thing is HLS, the Human Lander System. Now this is the missing piece for finally landing humans on the moon again. It's figuring out how to get them from their capsule into like a tiny little rocket basically that can go down to the surface and then launch them back up. That's like one of the hardest things to do because we don't know much about how to do that and we can't use a bunch of weight and like make a bunch of errors. So this HLS program is something that we've been working on for a while. I uh, was on one of the teams, Dianetics. There's three teams, SpaceX, um, the national team, which had Blue Origin, Lockheed Martin, and Northrop Grumman, and then um, Dianetics, which is my team. We were a subcontractor of that working on life support. And HLS was officially awarded this month. So it was awarded to SpaceX. So it's kind of a bummer for me because I'm not on the SpaceX team. But the cool thing is that means we're going back to the moon. We've got money to sustain this HLS so that we can get down to the surface of the moon again. And the goal is still 2024. Mission timelines tend to slip. So I'm sure you'll see humans on the moon again by 2026, 2028. I'd say 2028 being the latest. So somewhere in the next eight years, was that seven years or so, you're gonna see humans back on the moon. And that's a very exciting thing to say. Um, and a lot of that's because of SpaceX. So you're gonna see Starship on the moon too, which is yet another exciting thing to say. Um, what else we got going on? Um, okay, so the cool thing coming up, we've got May has a bunch of space celebration going on. May 5th is gonna be um, National Astronaut Day. So what I want you guys to do is to Tell me who your favorite astronaut is. Either comment on this video, or what I really want you to do is get a picture of them and post that picture and tag me and tag Rubik's and tag them. Tag that astronaut, especially if they're still alive, because we want to see, we want them to see that people appreciate what they're doing and want to be astronauts and, and see them for who they are. So we're celebrating astronauts. So on May 5th, get ready to post your favorite astronaut. And then on May 7th, guys, that's my birthday. That's my birthday. Don't tell anyone. But May 7th is also National Space Day. I'm so glad because like, I'm, I'm born on National Space Day this year. That's so exciting. So I get to celebrate space and my birthday all in one. Um, and that's coming up where we just celebrate everything going on in space, giving tribute to astronauts and, and Apollo and all that stuff, but also doing deep space and black holes and nebulas um, and, you know, planetary geology and all these different things that are bringing us together as a space industry. So there's a lot of celebration coming up this month. I hope you guys get excited. Um, if you see something pop up about these about space, click on it and learn a little bit more. And um, I think the other thing that I really have to comment on 
is that I'm going to be doing an Instagram takeover on Rubik's on May 5th to celebrate National Astronaut Day. So if you guys are ready for that, um, I will be all over this page answering all of your space questions, and I can't wait to see you guys there. So happy STEM Sunday, and we'll see you guys in a few days here. Bye.